Welcome to the first iGEM UW Academy video. Here I'm going to be explaining central dogma. So here I've laid out a little piece of a genome which has five genes on it, which I'm represented by these little boxes. And inside them, you can see the little red part is the, the promoter. Uh, so the promoter serves the function of a hailing something called an RNA polymerase. You've probably heard of it. So this is a molecule, polymerase, which will come and recognize that sequence. Uh, so let's say it binds like that. And then once it recognizes it and everything's okay, then it kind of moves down the gene right to the end. And then once it's made it to the end of the gene, it falls off. So what has been accomplished here? It actually has been reading the DNA from here to here and produces a single-stranded version of what was a double-stranded DNA into an mRNA mRNA. So this is actually a copy of what was here, but it's single-stranded and it's RNA instead of DNA. So this mRNA can then fall off of the RNA polymerase and it goes on its merry way throughout the cell until, so here's our mRNA now, kind of zoomed in, until it encounters a ribosome. So ribosome. So the ribosome will actually recognize a little sequence on the mRNA called the ribosome binding site. And so this kind of big two-parted molecule, I guess it's kind of an enzyme too, it, it recognizes that part and then it moves down the mRNA all the way to the end. And once it gets to the end, it will have produced a series of amino acids together on this uh, kind of string, you can think of it that way. And the way that it's, it knows which amino acids to put in what order is based on what the sequence of DNA was on the mRNA. Um, yeah, so it's kind of magical. Um, anyway, so once it's finished moving along, then this this uh, kind of fully fully formed string of amino acids breaks off. So let's let's redraw that down here. So you've got these little amino acids. They are quite small. Uh, so there are only 20 amino acids. Uh, of course, that varies between organisms and, and different kingdoms of life. But anyway, so it forms this big string. And of course, I'm not trying as many amino acids as you find in a typical protein. But each of these amino acids has a different property. Well, each of the 20 has a different property. And because they're aligned in different ways, all together like that, then they, they and their different properties attract each other in different ways. So you can imagine that maybe this guy is attracted to this guy, and this guy likes to fold over to here, and this guy comes into something funky over here. So a, a very complex folding mechanism ends up ensuing, simply because these guys are, have, have these different chemical properties which draw them to one another in different ways. So then this entire molecule ends up folding up into a kind of wicked shape, something very complex which amazingly has a function in the cell. Um, so just to be clear, this part here where the RNA polymerase turns double-stranded DNA into mRNA, the single-stranded molecule, is called transcription. And this part here where you take the mRNA and turn it into an amino acid sequence is called translation. Um, so the way I like to remember that is that it's not really too far a step to go from a double-stranded molecule to a single-stranded molecule, uh, and transcription isn't really that hard. But translation, if you want to translate a language, now that's quite difficult, because you're going from DNA to something completely foreign, uh, amino acid sequence. So uh, let's take an example. I guess if, if this was a GFP gene, so GFP stands for green fluorescent protein. It's something we use a lot in the lab, actually. Um, so you can imagine that the RNA polymerase came and it recognized its sequence and then it turned it into an mRNA of the GFP sequence and then the ribosome uh, turned that into the proper amino acid sequence which then folded up on itself and turned into a molecule which quite amazingly elicits a green light when uh, another light is shined on it. Uh, so you have, to, you have to shine the right light. You have to shine ultraviolet light on it or a a laser light of a peculiar wavelength, but this guy will actually just emit green light under the right circumstances. It's quite amazing that just this sequence of amino acids will produce something that can shine light. Um, yeah, so that will conclude the first video. I, I hope I 
covered all the bases, and I guess I'll see you in the next video.